Hello and welcome to Live at 525 on Channel 17. My name is Debbie Ingram and I'm the Executive Director of Vermont Interfaith Action and we're the organization bringing you this show tonight. Uh, the title of our show is What You Can Do About Climate Change uh, because we're sponsoring an event that we're going to be talking about at Ojave Zedek Synagogue uh, and um, we'll tell you all about how you can join us. It's on December 12th and uh, what, uh, what you'll learn at that event. But first, let me just tell you a little bit about Vermont Interfaith Action, if you don't know us. We are a coalition of uh, congregations uh, all across the state, 42 member and affiliated congregations. And we work together to um, effect systemic change around issues of social justice. Over the years, we've worked on things like affordable housing and homelessness, on healthcare reform, on public education, criminal justice reform, public transportation, and, um, and now we're turning uh, some of our attention to climate change. So um, let me introduce my, my guests uh, tonight or have them introduce uh, themselves. This is Rabbi Amy Small from Ojave Zedek Synagogue. Hello, uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Great, thank you. And this is Karen Corpman, also from Ojave Zedek Synagogue. She's a board member both of Ojave Zedek and of Vermont Interfaith Action. Hi, happy to be here as well. Great, thank you very much. So um, let's let's just start uh, with you, Karen, and um, ask you what um, what prompted this uh, this event that's coming up on December twelfth. Um, basically, after the excitement in. 2015 and 2016, where the world finally came together and virtually every country in the world, with the exception of two, Nicaragua because they wanted something stronger, and Syria because it was in the middle of a civil war, everybody joined and signed to move in the right direction. And the beauty of what they, uh, the plan they had was that everybody, uh, made their own goals and did what they could that would fit their country and they then were going to track these and they will and the idea being that as technology improves these and goal these goals will then move forward at a faster rate as happened with various other things that were done in similar ways uh, then we elected Trump and President Trump has announced that he's pulling us out of the accord, which he can't do until November 2020. Mm -hmm. So this may or may not come about, from, or if it does come about, it will last only a few months if a different president has a different view. Uh, the reaction in the states was immediate, and Washington State, California, and New York led the rest of the states and were, were um, allied with people like Michael Bloomberg, who was a UN special envoy for climate change, and created We're Still In. Vermont immediately joined it. And then um, uh, I received the email that you sent that VIA was uh, invited to attend the announcement by Governor Scott and Mira Weinberger to, um, uh, to, you know, come up with our response. And our response was essentially to have a summit which was described as a mini Paris where all the businesses, all the uh, NGOs, the municipalities, and the state itself would bring to the table what they could bring to the table. And um, Meryl Weinberger also had a different analogy which is he said, this is a lot like a Vermont potluck. <laughs> and what better thing could we have for uh, the religious communities in Vermont to get involved with than a potluck because it's what we do. <laughs> and so the idea here is that we could, through um, VIA, host an event that would basically take the message that was at the summit that the state had and spread it to both the congregations so that they, when they're making their plans going forward, can consider climate change as they're doing things with their facilities. And then in addition, the congregants could decide what they can do and we can use the tool that Vermont has created called the dashboard where people can put their commitments in. 
Great. Okay. Right. So both um, people uh, people can do this both at the individual level, make changes in their own their own households, mm -hmm. and we're encouraging people to come from um, from congregations, but also I guess other organizations too. Mm -hmm. We'd be happy. Uh, you know, I think probably like schools and. Uh, maybe businesses uh, yeah. could could take steps as well. So yeah, so everybody's welcome to to come, mm -hmm. and you'll and they'll learn about uh, this. The the dashboard is part of uh, is that part of the state's plans it's or the part, city's plans? It's part of what the state put together, uh -huh. and it's a way that you can put the commitments in. And the idea of it is, if you see your neighbor putting something in, you might say, you know, I can do that too. And the same with municipalities, where when they see each other doing things, they can follow or they could call up and say, you had this in a year ago, did it work? Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, there could be a lot of synergies in people seeing what other people are doing and it could create momentum. Mm -hmm. Great, great, excellent, all right, good. Well, um, Rabbi Amy, I'd like to turn to you and um, have, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about why the, um, why the synagogue thought that this was something uh, that was important to, to follow up on and what the purpose uh, of this is from, the, from your point of view? Well, we're very concerned about climate change and from a religious perspective, there are few things more urgent than this and that is preserving God's creation and there's a rich tradition within our with within Jewish text, but I know many of our faith traditions as well, that speak to um, the glory and grandeur of creation as coming from God, that it is given to us as a gift, but it's a gift on loan. We don't get to use it up, consume it, and leave nothing left, but rather to enjoy it and to leave it for the next generation. And so this, this feels like a very powerful religious issue. And even while we know that as a religious community and as our various religious traditions will support, and even as people in Vermont know that this is uh, a calling to us, not everybody's on board yet. So we thought that if the religious communities could motivate people and help them, give them tools, then we could actually be part of the solution. Right. So, uh, so uh, other other congregations then will be will be in attendance. Is that right? Yes. Well, uh, part of our goal in bringing VIA into this was so that we could spread it with everybody in the Vermont community who would like to attend and is able to attend. And there will be a series of clergy speakers. Uh, we have, besides myself, a Unitarian pastor. Um, we have um, six different religious traditions that will be speaking, Unitarian, um, Congregational, um, UCC, uh, Catholic, um, and, and uh, Lutheran. So. So our goal is to demonstrate that this is not a Jewish issue. It's not a Christian issue. It's not a specific denominational issue. This is a human issue. Each one of our religious traditions speaks to it. So the clergy that are going to be part of this panel will be able to represent that from our own text. And we hope that people from all across the religious spectrum will join us. Yes, great. It sounds Sounds good, and that is something that VIA tries to, to do, is to show the, the similarities between all of our different faith traditions, because as we, as we know, uh, we, uh, uh, people of faith have sometimes not behaved well uh, in, right. in trying to work together with one another, but um, that's something we're trying to change, and um, something that we do, I think, we do quite well and, um, uh, and apply to our social justice issues here, here in the state. And, and no the question country. about it. And, and in fact, as much as VIA is the model for how all of our religious communities can work together on issues that we care about, so too is Vermont a model politically. Mm -hmm. We have a Republican governor, the a Democratic mayor of the city of Burlington. Uh, they are working together on this. There are no partisan lines here. This is for us a human issue, and we can demonstrate how you don't need to be in your own corner when it comes to this issue, but rather to be united together. Absolutely, yes. We can be proud of that. Yes, we can be. Yes, definitely. 
Um, so, um, Karen, can you tell us a little bit more about maybe what some specific things are that on the dashboard or things that people might uh, might be able to do? Um, basically, what we have is uh, what we're going to do is we're going to give people as part of uh, the, on one side it'll be a commitment card of what they can commit to. On the other side, we're going to provide information, including two links to the dashboard. One link will take you to where you can register as a residence. And on the same link, it has something you could click on, which gives you um, a three-page checklist explaining different things that could be possibly done. And so this provides you a bunch of things that you can say are, you know, that doesn't quite work for me, this one does. But at any rate, they would have that. The other thing we would do is we would be on the back of it as part of the information part, putting in the organizations that provide either tools or our advocacy groups so that people can have one piece of paper they can take home they could fill out the one side saying, I'm committed to be involved, and then to check how they're going to be committed um, on a really high level at the top, but then turn, turn it over and have some information that helps them go about doing it. The other thing is, um, after the main event, we're gonna have refreshments because we always have refreshments. <laughs> and uh, at the same time, we will have tables where um, we are asking groups that are either um, provi providers of information to help on various issues or our advocacy groups if they would like to man tables. We've put some feelers out, we've gotten some yeses, but um, anybody who wants, if they can send, uh, could we have it sent to VIA if somebody is interested who's Absolutely. listening and wants to be involved in it? Mm -hmm. And we'll get back to you and you know, you can have a table. Yes, great, great. Yeah, and some of the some of the names we've talked about are uh, Vermont uh, Interfaith Power and Light, right? Um, and, um, Efficiency Vermont, um, the Chittenden Waste because of composting, right. which gets rid of a lot of methane gas. Uh -huh. um, and then for advocacy, 350. 350 is an advocacy group, and uh, VPIRG, which is another advocacy group. Um, and we have one person who's an expert on solar, and so he will have some information on that. Great, great, excellent. So if I may, first of all, in naming a, a few of the religious communities who will be speaking, that was not to say that everybody isn't part of this, but that just happens to be the panel we were able to put together. This is for everybody and speaks to everybody. So forgive me if I've left somebody out, <laughs> only because we couldn't have every single religious community represented right. in that in that particular moment. But I wanna say that this is the first night of Hanukkah, December 12th, mm -hmm. and for us that's a perfect match because Hanukkah is called the Festival of Lights. Mm -hmm. And here we are thinking about what does it mean to use electricity and to, uh, and to warm our homes and our businesses and our synagogues and our churches and our mosques. And so for us, that goes together. This is where we think about what is the, the, the oil that's going to be used to make that happen. Um, so to conclude the program, we will light the Hanukkah lights together and we have special treats in our, in, our, um, in our food that we'll have that are special for Hanukkah as well that we'll share. That's really, uh, really something that I'm looking forward to because it does really make it a more meaningful um, connection between uh, the, the faith and, and what we're trying to do in a, in a practical right. way. And um, yes, yeah, that'll, that will be, be very nice, very special. Um, so glad you're able to do that. Um, so um, let's talk a little bit more about why, um, um, you know, why states and cities feel that they need to, to do this. The, the Paris Climate Accord, you gave us some good background on that um, before. Uh, and I, some of my knowledge of, of it actually comes from uh, watching the documentary that uh, Al Gore did about the, mm -hmm. an inconvenient sequel mm -hmm. uh, yeah. because they really showed mm -hmm. how, how difficult it was. You, you mm -hmm. mentioned that in your opening remarks about how hard it was, but I know you've had a, a real passion for this for for a long time. Could you could you share with us a little bit more of the the history of the movement and your passion for it? Well, um, 
I was probably more involved intellectually and politically than I was in any of the advocacy groups on it. So what I actually know more about is um, the history of the um, efforts made by, you know, of the two people that are political. Obviously the two are Al Gore and John Kerry, who did an amazing amount of the um, lift in getting it to happen. Uh, Al Gore, after he lost the presidency, even though he genuinely got more votes and really won <laughs> Florida, uh, but uh, at any rate, he uh, never got in, he never got inaugurated as president. Mm. But he then went out, and then a year later came back with the documentary that you spoke of, and I think that was what really changed it into a political issue. For most people, although not to the extent that you could actually, I mean, it was it was really something that more people said they were interested in. But every time you had a survey and you'd go and say, "What are the three things that you would will determine your vote?" It was never one of them, mm -hmm. and it probably still isn't because there are other more pressing needs that people usually mention. Mm -hmm. But at any rate, it changed it so that people took it as an issue. Um, then um, with, uh, when um, Secretary Kerry became secretary, he had gone to uh, talking to President Obama before he you know, became secretary, indicated he wanted climate change to be his issue as women's and children's issues were Hillary's issues in that context. And he had been involved in it. He and Gore had been, at the, he had gone, he was on the same committee where Gore had the early Senate hearings. Uh, Gore had done some hearings actually in the, con in the House of, uh, in the House before he became Senator. But um, uh, then when he became Secretary, he basically, had all of these contacts because he had gone to all the, the summits. And so he worked with the Chinese and uh, were, was able to get the agreement with the US-China agreement, which then led to getting similar agreements at Lima, which was before mm. um, right. Paris. Paris yeah. And so then at Paris, you had basically this whole new definition that people, instead of having one set of rules for states, you know, for countries to abide by, each country put their own goals in. And the thing that is good about that is every, in reality, it makes it a complete lie that the president uh, had to pull us out because we were being treated wrong. We set our goal. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, the diff and we also could change it, <laughs> you know, but so it was totally political red meat to uh, yeah. the people he had believing him that it was not a good deal. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, that when doing it, uh, they pulled in the cities, they pulled in the states, the tech companies, all of them had representation in Paris. And in particular, among the cities, uh, Mayor Bloomberg, as the UN Special Envoy had worked with our State Department and they pulled all the cities together, the big cities together and internationally. And they had a few conferences, the idea being that every city spends a lot of money trying to do things and some paths are paths that go nowhere. So the idea was it would be good if they all got together and said, we did this and here's how it worked. We did this and it didn't work because it was as important to know what didn't work as it was to know what did work, which um, I'm stealing that quote from Bloomberg's comments. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he also, the, um, the State Department also made sure that all of the US tech companies, all of whom have a vested interest in being in this big, huge market, of new technology that's going to replace the fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the tech companies wanted to be there. They 
were excited to be called in and have a place at the table, and they did, and they were at Paris. And as you saw in the Gore movie, there were times where some of the countries were actually influenced by people who were tech companies saying, we can help you on this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because for many companies, the, the problem was it will, you know, they, they don't have a lot of resources. And if it was going to cost a lot more to do clean energy than dirty energy, they weren't able to do it. So that was why the, um, some of the state, the, the wealthier countries were actu actually funded uh, efforts so that some of the countries that were third world countries could be assisted. But in addition to that, you had independent things done by companies. I see. Right. Okay. Well, and bringing up the whole business uh, aspect of it, um, mm -hmm. you know, I've heard uh, from uh, different sources that um, that there are a lot of um, uh, ways that our economy will be boosted by by these renewable uh, energy um, pursuits and and jobs will mm -hmm. uh, will be uh, will be created. Um, so we're kind of losing out on that in in pulling out of the accords mm -hmm. as right. well as mm -hmm. well. But, um, uh, Rabbi, I know you know a lot about this subject as well. Do you think that uh, that just our cities and states being able to implement certain changes, will that actually, will that really make a difference or do we need the federal, uh, you know, the, the federal support? Well, I'm not giving up on the federal support. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the fact of the matter is that most of the work gets done by the folks that's us, mm -hmm. the people. And um, by laying the groundwork in towns and cities, in small communities and, and growing it and making the network rich and uh, connected, we can affect what should be done by the federal government by doing it from the ground up. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's really a metaphor for um, uh, for the way VIA does our work, exactly. right? I mean, we're we're a, a grassroots organization, and that's exactly what we be believe in as well. Is that top-down solutions are not what we're after. It's talking to the people on the ground, uh, people who n who uh, are affected directly by issues, uh, and and having the f confidence in them that they understand what solutions uh, need to to. Uh, come about in order to, to fix these problems. That's right. Yeah. The other thing is you have one example where during the George W. Bush years mm -hmm. where uh, the, it wasn't possible to have uh, a federal uh, effort to do a cap and trade on carbon. You have all of the Northeast states um, that join something called REGI, which is essentially a cap and trade. Vermont actually gets money from other states because we've gone faster in cutting our carbon than we were required to under the models. And so other states that traded off moving as fast as they were supposed to, you know, instead paid Vermont to, you know, because we didn't use ours. Mm -hmm. yes. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, uh, I'm so grateful to uh, Javi Zedek for sponsoring this event, and uh, we're really looking forward to it. And I certainly want to encourage folks who are watching us uh, today to uh, to come out and uh, and participate and see and hear from uh, some of our guest speakers. We're hoping that, that the mayor will be able to come, right? We're not, mm -hmm. not we're sure hoping. yet, you know, uh, right. according to his schedule. But we we will definitely have folks from uh, Burlington Electric has been has been really kind of a pioneer in this. Yeah, haven't they? and um, Jennifer Green is definitely going to be able to come. She is somebody who I believe she's in uh, the mayor's office mm -hmm. and she's but she's located at Burlington Electric because the mayor has put Berlin, Burlington Electric at the front of the effort mm -hmm. and Burlington Electric has basically uh, accomplished basically had Burlington become I think the first city in the United States that was actually uh, totally renewable energy. Um, if not the first, it was one of the very first and uh, major accomplishment. And the city itself intends to try to move to net zero mm -hmm. uh, overall, which is really much, much 
broader and much more difficult, and it will be a very daunting challenge. Mm, yes, yes. Well, and I want to uh, offer some kudos to uh, other parts of the county as well, because uh, I, for instance, don't live in, in Burlington, <laughs> but um, my, my electric carrier is uh, Vermont Electric Co-op, and they've They've also created a very user-friendly website that helps me to track, uh, you know, when my um, usage is is greater than it is, at, you know, at other times, and so I can do things like, you know, program my uh, my heating and, um, you know, for like the times when I'm not in the house, and you know, reduce my consumption that way, and mm -hmm. and look at uh, all kinds of other other things, uh, you know, with regard to my electricity and set up timers and, and that kind of thing. So, um, and I know, I'm sure the Green Mountain Power is probably doing the mm -hmm. same kind of thing. So for, you know, our other Chittenden County residents who might be watching this, they're, you know, they're, there's, they don't have there's to move to something. Burlington. They don't have to, that's <laughs> right, <laughs> that's right. This is regional. <laughs> yes, yes, and as, yes, as we said, for all of Vermont, I think all it's doing, us. you know, it's doing a, a really good job. Mm -hmm. So, um, so uh, just to recap again then, the, um, uh, the event will be on Tuesday, December 12th, which is the, the first night of Hanukkah, and uh, that will start at 7.30, mm -hmm. um, go until about 7.30 to 9 p.m., and uh, refreshments will be will be provided. Absolutely. <laughs> right, and when we'll have many organizations um, uh, besides Vermont Interfaith Action will be there tabling and providing information for people to, uh, to be able to figure out how they can be uh, more personally involved um, you know, at different levels, whether it's uh, advocating for changes in the legislature or um, or, or doing other, other kinds of things around their, their homes or their organizations uh, or their congregations. Mm -hmm. So, great. Well, thank you so much for thank being you. here. And, thank uh, you. We hope that everybody, uh, everybody comes out. And <laughs> Look forward so, to it. Thanks very much for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you again in a, in a month or so.